morning, everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday morning devotions. Uh, Bruce here for Contact Beach Baptist. Great to be with you. Well, over the last couple of uh, Wednesday mornings, we have been looking at core values. And so I want to continue with that. Last uh, time we looked at uh, the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We looked at that over a number of weeks and uh, particularly thinking about how nothing matters more. Jesus should always be front and centre in our lives. I've got a little diagram here that I find helpful. You know, that uh, the great philosopher Shrek, if you've ever seen the movie Shrek, he says uh, in, in one of the movies, he says, we're onions. We have layers, every one of us. And uh, so I've taken a leaf out of his book. And see, we are a bit like onions because when you think about it, uh, everything, who we are, is at the core affected by our worldview. And our worldview affects the things we believe. Uh, and our beliefs, they affect our values, the things that we cherish and hold on to. That's the stuff that we're talking about, uh, our values. And our values, they in turn affect our behaviour. Individually, they affect our behaviour, but they also collectively as a, a culture, they affect our culture. <clears throat> so, I think it's really important that we think about our, um, our values and nail down. Uh, and as a Baptist churches, there are some va values that we kind of collectively hold that kind of distinctively make us um, Christians firstly, but those who are of the Baptist tradition. And then in each, each individual church, we have our own uh, subset of values, I guess you might think about it, that make us who we are, distinct from others, but yet collectively uh, valuing some stuff together. So... So what, what I want to talk about this morning is community and how that's a value that really we hold on to being into commu in community. We've sort of seen over the, when looking at the, the Lordship of Jesus, how that value of following Jesus, it, uh, the value that nothing matters more, that Jesus should be always front and centre in our lives, that flows from a belief that we have, the, the, our understanding of who Jesus is. And that then affects uh, the fact that we, we value him and that we will submit to him as Lord. And which should, in turn, affect uh, our behaviour, our outward behaviour, and affect collectively how we operate as a church. And we've seen that um, in uh, in the first letter, the first book of Colossians, the first chapter of Colossians, in verses fifteen to twenty, Paul really clearly outlines who Jesus is. He says, let me find it. Hello. I have lost my... I'll have to look it up. I thought I'd printed it out, but I haven't. So we'll look up Colossians chapter 1. 
extraordinary reading. Here we go, I've got it on my computer, that's easier to read. Okay, so from Colossians chapter 1 verse 15, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, rulers or authority, all things were created through Him and for Him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. There you go. You couldn't have it more clear, could you? Jesus should be front and centre of our lives. Uh, we've got to acknowledge that there's a gap, that you know, uh, we strive to to have him first. That's where he should be, his rightful place. Um, we struggle to do that, but with the Spirit's power, uh, that's how how we can have uh, with the the Spirit of Jesus in our lives. That's how we can operate with that value firmly in place. Well, the value I really wanted to focus on this morning was the value of community. And that value of community is shaped by our belief that about who God is, that he, he's a God who's Father, Son, he's revealed to himself as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's always been in community and he created us and who we are, his purposes for us, that those beliefs about that shape then our understanding of community and how we should live in community, in church community and in families, all of that. Uh, it, it's, it's, to shape the very fabric of who we are in our society. And if we keep reading in uh, Colossians chapter 1, I think Paul goes on to help to outline uh, stuff about about community, about living in community, about who we are and how that should affect the way we think about each other, how we act towards one another. So I'll keep reading from verse... Let me find it. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to him all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of cross, the blood of his cross. And you who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil things. We didn't always believe what we do about Jesus. And so that affected our behaviour previously. He has reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. See, his purpose for us is to present us uh, holy 
if indeed you continue in your faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope you have in the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Can you see how his his understanding and his explanation of the gospel, it their their belief in that provides security, provides uh, a steadiness. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake and in my flesh. And I'm filled up, I, I am filling up what is lacking in Christ, Christ's affliction for the sake of his body, the church, of which I am a minister according to to the stewardship from God that was given to me to make the word of God fully known. I'm going to jump right down to the bottom because I think there's some verses down here which really speak to this idea of community and how we are to live in community with one another. To them God chose to make known the great, how great among the Gentiles are the riches of his glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. In him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. See, from, from Paul's understanding of, of who God is and who he is, he is now out proclaiming the truth of who God is, who Jesus, uh, and, and the truth that Jesus should be front and centre in everybody's life. He, he should be preeminent. Uh, that because he's he is in charge in fact that's the truth he's on the throne so and his purpose is that he present everyone mature in Christ so his value of community he would wants to see everybody in community with God and so there's room, from Paul's perspective, he can see, even with the Gentiles, he didn't have a, a, um, a segregated view that some people weren't worthy. No, Christ died for all. So he's, he's working towards that. And that's the same value that we should have, that there's room for everyone. That Anyone can experience authentic community. And that should be the way that we operate as a church, shouldn't it? That we are, are warm towards those, towards outsiders. We are generous towards those who don't yet know who Jesus is. And we're wanting to invite, wanting to invite. There's always, you know, Jesus all the way through the Gospels, you see how he invites people to follow him. But he's not afraid, as he builds relationship, he's not afraid to challenge. Because he doesn't want to see us. He, he, he invites us just the way we are, but he doesn't want us to stay the way we are. So his invitation is always balanced by the challenge of what it means to follow. 
what we have to leave behind, what we have to change in, in our behaviours, in our uh, beliefs and understanding. But there's a, a warmth of uh, a generosity, a hospitality that we should be characterised by to have entry points for people to come to know who Jesus is and to know the truth. After all, that is, this is the truth we're talking about. And so, um, and so this whole idea of community, about being in close community, what, what should characterise our community? Our char our, uh, there, is, um, there should be open doors, willingness to, to come, and yet a high calling of commitment. A high call to commit to follow Jesus, but it's not a controlling one. It's a call. Jesus never, uh, never tries to actually control us or force us to be followers. He calls us to follow, to voluntarily come and be in community with him and with his, uh, with his followers. And one more thing I want to share before we finish today is that often, often in community we have placed, um, because there's things that we value, then we are uh, we can sometimes get things out of out of kilter about putting the behaviour, the requirements of behaviour, as a requirement for becoming part of the community or for belonging. But it often doesn't work like that. Often, see, we, we want to have people to be, behave and when they come to believe, then okay, they can belong. But even through, throughout the Bible and the way it seems to work uh, in practice to us today is that uh, people get a sense of belonging way before they get they actually uh, start to to behave in ways that are appropriate uh, or that we might see as appropriate to or conform to uh, so there's a, a progression is more like this that when we have open um, welcome an invitation mentality then as people are convicted by the spirit then they, they take the step of belief and behaviour starts to follow then as the spirit leads and as he puts his finger on different things in our lives. You think about your own life and how that is, has played out for you uh, rather than having you know, a, a fortress mentality where you know, we've got to protect and only let in people who, um, who believe in a certain way. There's a difference, um, I think, in how we allow folk to, to experience God through coming. doesn't mean we don't have high standards for behaviour uh, and don't, doesn't mean there's not consequences for those, but our stance on community and on what the way that Jesus, his purpose for us is that we want to see everyone uh, come into community 
with Jesus and that there is room for everyone. Everyone who, and as they journey, there needs to be that progression, of course, to uh, people. We can't control the way people behave, but um, they choose basically if they're going to continue with Jesus or not. And um, so that's that's my thought for this morning, uh, that a, a value of community, that there's room for everyone and that anyone can experience authentic community. That's the way it should be in our church. Let's close in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for, for all you have done for us to enable us to come into community with you. Help us just as you have been so generous to us to have that generosity, that warmth, that kindness that is willing to uh, invite, willing to, to get to know at depth, Lord, and to share, share who you are with those who don't yet know, to help to journey with those, with each other, so that we together might know you deeply. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, that's it for today. God bless. And uh, don't forget tomorrow morning uh, that PJ will be on again, 9.30. And on Friday, Dan will be on 9.30 again. And our services, don't forget our services on uh, online on Sunday, 9.30 and 5 o'clock. God bless for now.